basically desecration of a historical artifact relative to the BMW community and an E30 M3. So this story begins with one of the absolute nicest, lowest mileage surviving E30 M3s that uh, EAG has ever sourced uh, from the original owner uh, in good old Atlanta, Georgia. This one owner car had been uh, the European segment of this collector's eye. He was a big Mustang guy. And jumping right to it, uh, we sold a world-class car that ends up getting desecrated by uh, quite a famous rapper uh, all inside of a one-year window. The car was a Alpine white on cardinal red, very rare, very early only color combination. It's a car that we bought in, I want to say, around 2014. And we buy this car. It's so nice. It's the nicest, lowest mileage one that we had seen uh, that was an accurate representation of what it should be. And having bought it from the direct and only owner, the car was, was on point. We end up keeping this car for our private collection. We're our own best customer at the end of the day. That's why we got into this craft. And uh, we always have kept the best cars that we could find and, and enjoyed them and used them and showed them and used them as a reference car when we're going to go through and rehabilitate other cars for our clients and our own internal stuff. We've got a really good client out in Southern California that has uh, a very strong Porsche connection. He's uh, on uh, Spike's Car Radio, good old Paul Zuckerman, and uh, he's got a BMW streak that is quite tasteful, frankly. And he's bought some of the nicest stuff that we've had historically, and it started with a car that also wasn't for sale. And it was also Alpine White, and it was an E39 M5 that was in our stable. And he says, I want to buy that car. Three minutes into the conversation, never talked to the guy before. Hey, Eric, well, I like, I like that car. Is that for sale? I want that M5, that white one. No, it's not for sale, Paul. Everything's for sale, Eric. What, how much you want for it? 2013, this is. Give, give you $70,000. I've never sold one for more than $45,000 at the time, but it's the right car. Um, no, Paul, I can't, I can't replace the car. Well, I'll give you $75,000, last and final. I couldn't not take that owning 27 or 28 other E39 M5s. And once it crosses over that MSRP origination point, uh, that's the kind of no going back. That market's going to probably continue to go up. And so we sell that car and build that relationship with Paul on that first M5. Well, fast forward to several other cars. And uh, it kind of happens again with this Alpine White on Cardinal E30 M3 with just 8,000 miles. I mean, it's, it is a original tires are on the car. It is as nice as they come. Super well-preserved, Concorde number one. Well, Paul gets the car, he's super happy with it. He's talking the car up, it's all over his Instagram. He's very, very smitten, another successful EAG um, uh, sale. Uh, I'm happy he's happy, good deal. Getting ready to head home from work, it's 6.30 or seven o'clock on a Thursday night or so, and I get a call from a client buddy, and he's like, uh, did, you, did you hear uh, uh, Paul talking about your, your E30 M3 today? The one he just sold them a couple of weeks ago. I'm like, uh, no, what are you talking about? So I you know, go home and didn't think anything of it. I working out in the morning and swimming and going and doing my routine. And I turn the, the, his podcast on and, and uh, hear the whole story, how Paul basically ran, runs into this famous rapper's manager of sorts. And they decide that this white E30 M3 that Paul was driving at the time was something that this rapper really needed in his life. Didn't go into the details of what this was for. Uh, he's like, can I take it up the hill and show it to him? And Paul's like, it's not for sale. I mean, he knows this strategy well. <laughs> and so he uh, decides that enough money has been discussed that uh, the car can go up the hill. And up the hill it went. I don't know that it ever came back down. The pretty strong number that Paul paid for this car had just been eclipsed by a, a almost equally strong number. $250,000 later, uh, in 2019, this number one condition E30 M3 no longer is owned by Paul and is in the uh, care of Travis Scott. He's just getting ready to release a, another um, album and has some uh, purpose of using some 90s uh, vintage cars uh, relative to his Cactus Jack album and decides that it's a good idea to basically build the car the way that you would build a rally car by drilling a light bar into the hood, painting it, numbers on the side. Basically desecration of a historical artifact relative to the BMW community and any 30 M3 surviving examples. I hear this on a podcast for the first time. I know why Paul didn't tell me up front because, well, uh, he got paid and, and uh, he probably made 
a decision that made sense, and I didn't know what to think. Then a couple of days later, I see a, a here's a Matchbox car being made of the the same spec of the the now Cactus Jack E30 M3 that I guess will go down as one of the more famous E30 M3s of our time relative to what it was to begin with and, and uh, the whole story of, and chain of events. This is the backstory that's probably not really been told. I guess I'm not bitter about it, uh, having just sold uh, Paul another literal artifact that's been at BMW Zentrum Museum for 10 years, a M635 CSI with just 5,000 miles on it. Super number one car that uh, he promised he would not uh, sell uh, to anybody that was going to, to desecrate it in a similar nature. And that one will be coming home when it's done, I'm sure. Uh, otherwise, uh, Paul and I will probably not have some conversations that uh, won't be as friendly as the ones that we've had to date, but interesting life that car has now led and the stories that car will probably tell moving forward. I'd be really quite interested to see it again in real life and hope uh, at some point I, I probably will. I, uh, apparently it was auctioned off after the use was served in the, the filming of, and photography for charity, so I can certainly get behind that. I don't know what the charity was, uh, but I, I'm sure that uh, the car probably brought a per fair, I, I hope it brought as much as he paid for it. Let's just put it that way. Now, obviously at VinWiki, we love all of our sponsors, but first amongst equals would certainly be Auto Tempest. Not only have they supported the channel for the last three years, but they've made some of our favorite projects possible like Car Trek. It is honestly the first place that I look when I'm going to look for my next car. So these days that's about every morning. So we love Auto Tempest and it does make it easier than ever to find your dream car. They compile all the major listings from all the major sites into one easy search. Their motto is all the cars, one search, and it certainly is a great tool for that. So be sure to check them out at the link in the description below and thank them for their continued support of VinWiki.